Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are in the world today. Welcome to the Esri Land Administration Webinars Series, Modernizing Land Administration Systems. I'm Brent Jones, the Industry Manager at Esri for Land Administration, and also presenting with me is Catherine Smythe, the Lead Solution Engineer on our Land Administration team. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, paste them in the question window in the GoToWebinar window and we'll try to get through those um, during the presentation and we'll get to the ones that we can't get during the presentation at the end of the presentation. Let's start and look at land administration holistically. Land administration is the process of managing, managing ownership or tenure, value, use, planning, management, and development. These areas are interdependent and all require good spatial data, spatial data management, analysis, and sharing capabilities. Here we'll begin to outline a platform approach that enables all land administration functions in a modern, secure, configurable, and scalable system. ArcGIS is a platform for land administration systems around the world powering key workflows, including cadastral mapping with industry standard data models and methods, and valuation capabilities from very simple to advanced, enabled by geographic weighted regression, Kriging, and other spatial analytical tools. ArcGIS's advanced analytical capabilities allow for exploratory analysis to understand such as where and why transactions are taking place and how location impacts value. This platform provides full field data collection tools, survey data management, and parcel mapping capabilities along with address systems and other important capabilities to power national data spatial infrastructures and for deploying national data portals and hubs. It's pretty exciting to look at all the areas in land administration where GIS plays a key role. Parcel mapping is a fundamental area around the world where ArcGIS delivers the gold standard in workflows and data integrity forming the foundation of tax systems, managing property characteristics while providing spatial analysis for value calculations. This foundation data or the system of record is used to map and analyze land use for planning and valuation for tax systems. It's important to note that ArcGIS is a full 3D platform that delivers the same data management and analysis tools in 3D. This enables 3D elements such as view shed analysis, sun exposure, and air rights to be used in valuation and 3D tax mapping. ArcGIS enables and optimizes all critical land administration workflows beginning with survey and data collection in the field, including LIDAR and photogrammetry, to efficient and secure parcel management workflows, modeling and analysis for valuation and, visualization, and visualizing results for uniformity, compliance, and outlier detection, and communicating appropriate data with internal organizations and the public. For each workflow, robust data management, advanced analytics and visualization, dashboards, and smart mapping are core enabled capabilities. GIS continues to advance and add capabilities that benefit land administration. The ability to integrate all types of data, particularly drones, survey, LIDAR, and imagery on a single platform are particularly useful. Combining that with new capabilities such as artificial intelligence and machine learning, cloud, mobile, and web services opens up a whole new set of tools to support GIS innovations such as advanced analytics, 3D, and online content, all driving WebGIS. WebGIS is the pattern that takes advantage of all of these. Today, everything we'll be talking about is based on WebGIS. But don't get hung up on connectivity. Just because it's WebGIS doesn't mean that you need to be connected to the internet all the time. The implementation of this technology allows for disconnected operations. I'd like to take a moment to discuss web services. I know many of you are familiar with them, but some of you may not be. Web services are a key technology that enables data sharing, app development, system integration, and many other necessary capabilities in a modern land administration system. It's convenient to think of a web service as a dial tone to your data. You can enable someone to view, query, or edit the data, and you have control over who does what, because in ArcGIS, 
you all users have identities. Identities are how we manage who does what and how we enable advanced security protocols. You use web services every day on your mobile phone and on your desktop. For example, if you're looking at maps, imagery, and routes on your phone, those are map, image, and route web services. We mash these services together to make web maps and apps. This pattern has been emerging for half a dozen years or so and is in the new generation of GIS. And it's based on a concept of sharing and collaboration, sharing information, and leveraging the technologies of web services to distribute and interconnect our knowledge and engage everyone. That's the big story behind it. This technology is driving major aspects of digital transformation in cadastre and valuation organizations. WebGIS is driving this digital transformation by helping organizations re-envision their workflows, moving from sequential workflows, sort of a first generation digital transformation, to simultaneous workflows with integrated operations, with different parts of an organization sharing common information and workflows all at the same time. It changes fundamentally how land administration organizations as a whole do their work. These web maps engage and interconnect everyone with billions of them being produced every day and they're supporting a new, new kinds of collaboration. They're becoming a language and tool for problem solving, for solving. Let's look at a few of these aspects and how they form the platform for land administration. Over to you, Catherine. Thanks, Brent. As you mentioned, WebGIS provides a common language to communicate spatial data. Often, we see a common customer context that exists right now around the world. Data is collected in the field to augment or update the cadastre registry. Often, the life cycle of the data ends there or is later provided as a spreadsheet or printed map. By utilizing a geospatial portal, you can securely synthesize, manage, analyze, and share your cadastral and valuation data. Within the context of land administration, the portal support supports both your business and operational needs. The portal is a secure place to store data on the cloud with the same security as any of the other cloud services that we trust every day. The portal is a place where new data can be created and existing data can be managed, updated, and shared. Let's say you have a fair amount of parcels left to collect before your cadastre is complete. In order to complete the cadaster, it is necessary that you collect the property boundaries and tenure for each structure. Once these properties have been collected, they must be managed correctly to maintain the integrity of the data. Our management system is based on recognition that properties change over time, and it keeps track of those changes. Depending on the responsibilities of your organization, you may then need to value the properties collected. There are several tools available to you that use the latest machine learning technology. We will discuss these later in the webinar and show you how we can help value property. During this process, it is also possible that other agencies or developers have requested your cadastral data. With Portal, it's easy to share data as services, which allow others to link to your data on the web or through web applications that can live on a site specifically meant for sharing data, either internally as with a national spatial data infrastructure or externally with the public. In addition to providing a common ground for your agency to manage and share data, the portal can also act as a node in a network of other nodes allowing you to share your authoritative data with others within your agency as part of a spatial data infrastructure. The portal can also be the underlying support for a hub where others are enabled to perform spatial analysis on your data or view trends and where your organization can collaborate with others on teams surrounding specific initiatives. Let's take a look at this in action. Right now, you should be seeing my ArcGIS online organization. 
I've signed in with my unique identity, which is a username and password. This is one level of security within our GIS online. What you're seeing right now are a series of maps that I've created. Let's explore a map right now. You'll notice that I've named this map LADM Shared. So it's using the Land Administration Domain Model. You can see in the item description the tables and layers that I'm using. If I open it up in a map, we'll be able to see even more detail. I've prepared this map behind the scenes to be able to be edited. If I go ahead and click on one of these or one of these features, then I can see all of the information about it. And I can also see the related records that are integral to the land administration domain model. These can even be edited on the fly when you have results. <laughs> I've gone ahead and I've shared this map as a web application. All I have to do in order to skin it is go up to share and determine how I want it to be shared. In this case, I've chosen to share this specific application with everyone so that you can all go on and look at it and play with the land administration domain modeling, editing infrastructure. If I want to create a web app, I select the web app here and I can either configure an app heads up or I can configure one with Web App Builder or put this data even into a dashboard. Here's the web app that I created with this editing workflow in mind. Now, from here, you would want to ask yourself who your audience is and who you want to share this data with. Is it internal or is it external? In my case, I wanted to share this application with you so that you could gain a better understanding about our workflows. I've also put this information on Hub. As I mentioned before, Hub is an area where you can store data surrounding initiatives. Here I've created an initiative specifically surrounding survey. You can see I've created a website specifically for the survey initiative. And I've also added the application that I created into my interactive applications area on, within my initiative. What does that look like to you? Well, I'd like to introduce you to that Esri Land Administration Hub site. This is live right now, and I'll post the link in the chat video or window after I finish talking and showing it to you. But I invite you all to take a look at this. Everything on here has been completely configured. I haven't coded anything from scratch. Now, if I want to go in and explore the survey initiative that I just showed you the back end of, I can just click Explore. And you can do this too on your own time. If I scroll down, I can see the web application that I had created and added into my hub initiative. Please feel free to come on here and explore for yourself. Over to you, Brent. All right, thanks, Catherine. Hopefully you get an idea of how the cloud environment ArcGIS Online enables land administration, some of the land administration functions. The This is all built on open and interoperability standards, and I'd like to take just a minute to discuss open. ArcGIS is engineered to be open and interoperable, and we do this in three ways. First, by supporting all leading open standards and formats. Second, by engineering direct connections between our platform and many other platforms, like Adobe Cloud or Autodesk and dozens of others. Third, we designed the core platform in an open architecture so that it's open data, open APIs, open source components, integration with open source tools, and an open architecture that can be extended easy by, easily by developers. This has been a successful strategy as evidenced by the tens of thousands of implementations where our tools are operating in, heterogene in heterogeneous environments around the world. ArcGIS enables three critical systems in land administration, the system of record, the system of insight, and the system of engagement. 
It's all on a common platform, eliminating the need to keep desperate systems in sync. We've all had version incompatibility of custom and interconnected systems, but we don't need to worry about that anymore. The system of record delivers a complete solution for editing and managing parcels and cadastral data. The system of insight delivers advanced spatial analytical capabilities for calculating value and understanding land use patterns. And the system of engagement delivers a secure data sharing system. You can control who you share data with, what they get, and what they can do with the data. This is extremely powerful. All three systems are interconnected on a single platform. These three systems are enabled by four key solution areas open data, value analysis, field operations, and parcel management. These contain essential industry standard workflows, methods, apps, and capabilities necessary in well-functioning land administration systems. In future webinars, we'll be discussing these in greater detail, but for, for today, we're going to deliver an overview on valuation and field operations and data collection. But before we dig into the capabilities for valuation, calculations, and analysis, I'd like to discuss the content in ArcGIS that is provided by Esri and the Esri community. Esri has provided thousands of maps and data sets, and the GIS community have shared millions of maps and layers, as well including the new dynamic OpenStreetMap service. There's different amounts and types of data based on what country you live in, so how you use this data for valuation will depend on where you're working. Leveraging this content can help you quickly develop a base map, enhance the mapping you already have, and perform analysis like calculating values. ArcGIS is well known for its comprehensive spatial analytical, analytical tools. There are over 1,200 of them. Last year, we added 60 more in the areas of space time, pattern mining analysis, large raster analytics, hydrologic modeling, data exploration, and visual analytics, including a new forest-based classification and regression analysis, particularly valuable in valuation. Today, we're going to look at some of these capabilities in ArcGIS Pro for valuation modeling, calculations, and outlier detection. We're going to explore some of the modeling and analysis cap and visualization and mapping capabilities that are used for valuation. This is an area where GIS is underutilized. I can't stress this enough. ArcGIS has all the modeling capabilities for all types of valuation systems, and using the spatial capabilities of modeling, you can generate quality values with less data and fewer attributes. This is particularly valuable in areas with sparse and incomplete property data. Over to you, Catherine. Thanks, Brent. The ArcGIS platform supports valuation workflows on both desktop and in the web. You may find the desktop tools in ArcGIS Pro to be useful to analyze your data and then choose to house the results on your portal. From there, values can be shared within web applications or open data or hub sites, as we previously saw, as part of a national spatial data infrastructure. There are four main steps to performing spatial analysis with ArcGIS. These steps also apply to the valuation workflow. Data preparation is perhaps the most time intensive step of these four. Making sure that you have a clean data set that includes attributes you wish to examine is the basis for success with any type of analysis and enables you to explore your data effectively. Exploration of data in GIS is often visual at first. You may see patterns that you had not expected to see which may influence your decision to move forward to modeling with your data. In the context of valuation, data modeling and analysis is supported with multiple geoprocessing tools found in ArcGIS Pro. As you prepare your data, consider augmenting what you have by geo-enriching geo your data sets with population information. The Living Atlas houses population information for many countries around the world. Adding this information can later help determine main variables that influence value. If you are valuing properties in a multi-story building, consider elevation when preparing your data for valuation. With new tools in ArcGIS Pro, it is possible to visualize view shed from a specific property in a multi-story building and assign a score or volume 
which can be added as an additional variable in your valuation analysis. A similar workflow could also be applied to air rights of a property. When you are ready to explore your data in any type of analysis, it is important to understand what attributes are valuable and worth taking another look at. Insights for ArcGIS was created with this interaction in mind. In valuation, using insights is an excellent way to identify outliers in your data and to visualize discrepancies in sales ratio. You can also perform lightweight regression analysis and visualize those results quickly in charts and on maps. We know that valuation is dependent upon the relationship of a property to its neighbors and whether those neighbors share common characteristics. The spatially constrained multivariate, multivariate clustering tool in ArcGIS Pro can assist in identifying features that share similar attribute values, such as price or square footage. Identifying trends and similarities is integral to the modeling and analysis step of spatial analysis and can also be used to create assessment districts or neighborhoods if you don't already have the, these boundaries. It's important to identify district boundaries to be able to QA, QC your initial findings. If your data has gaps or if you are looking for property value estimates, the forest-based classification tool in ArcGIS Pro can help fill in the gaps or create estimates based on all existing features and attributes in the data set. In property valuation, it's important to identify the top influencing variables when determining the value of a property. Forest-based classification trains a data set from your pre-existing property information and then uses machine learning to determine the top few influencers in your property value. In the United States, square footage of a building as well as number of stories often influences property's sale price but we understand that what one country values may not be similar to another. Use this tool to gain a clearer perspective on important variables in your country. Geographically weighted regression takes into account the importance of geographic relationships as well as pre-existing attributes. This tool in ArcGIS Pro was built with Tobler's law in mind. Everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. In valuation, geographically weighted regression is used to identify where valuation was successful by taking into account the sales ratio of assessment price to sales price. Once you have valued your properties, keep an eye on sales and property trends with a valuation dashboard. Now let's take a closer look at 3D valuation. As you can see here, I have a story map that details how you may use 3D to uh, value your properties. I'll also post this link into the chat window so that you can reference it later. We're interested in your feedback on this, so please let us know what you think. In this case, I'm looking at a building that is multi-story. It's overlooking a park. I'm interested to see what the visibility from different stories of the park is. In this example, we're showing the volume and the visibility from different stories looking onto the park itself. I can also use 3D to compare my 2D and three-dimensional views. In this case, what you see on the left may be a situation that we're all used to viewing, the 2D aerial view of a building and the park itself. On the right, notice that the building is in three dimensions. I can view that same visibility layer here and also understand the gradient of visibility by floor.
if we want to mesh something like geographically weighted regression when taking into account geographically placed assets such as rivers and the visibility uh, or the impact that visibility of those features has on a on a property we can visualize that in 3d as well here you can see by gradient on the building where it's darker green there's more visibility of this river from that area i can also calculate volume and the way that we envision this working is that you take the the volume or a score of a property that's overlooking a specific area or that has a particularly memorable view shed and use that as an attribute within your valuation analysis. Again, I'll post this link in the chat. Over to you, Brent. All right, thanks, Catherine. Now let's look at field data collection and importantly, field force management. It's not just about collecting data, it's about optimizing your field resources and setting priorities and schedules. Collecting data is important, but it's also important to use the right tool for collecting data. There are several apps and capabilities that are part of the ArcGIS platform. Collector for collecting survey accurate data with your own GPS or GNNS, GNSS using an Android or iOS device. Survey123 for creating your own data collection forms. Also, drone to map which is a full-featured drone data collection and ortho development system as part of the platform. There are capabilities for managing LIDAR, producing and publishing ortho photos, and other types of imagery, and stereo image feature collection, and the tools for managing the field workforce. Catherine's going to show us how all this comes together. Unfortunately, we don't have time to show everything, but if you need more information on any of these capabilities, we can be sure, be sure to get that information to you. Over to you, Catherine. Thanks, Brent. Depending on where you are in the process of managing your cadaster, Field operations may be the most important part of the platform for you. Consider if you already have the majority of parcels you will be using, or if there's a lot left to be done. If you are modernizing your cadaster, it's probably going to be necessary to update property information on a large scale. Data collection in ArcGIS is dependent upon sharing your data with the portal and sending updates back in an either connected or disconnected environment. Let's take a look at a few applications that will help you manage a field workforce and collect data. Workforce for ArcGIS allows field managers to create assignments on the fly and communicate them out to field staff on their mobile device. After downloading the app and signing in, field staff can see current assignments and seamlessly connect with other field applications, such as Collector and Survey123, to allow field staff to get their work done as efficiently as possible. This information can later be pulled into a dashboard so the dispatchers and office staff can see the progress that's being made in the field. After receiving an assignment from workforce in the field, as a field worker, I can begin to collect points, lines, and polygons, such as property boundaries. I can collect data using a highly accurate GNSS receiver, and I'm able to collect and edit data in a connected or disconnected state. If I'm disconnected, once I regain connectivity, Collector can be set to sync automatically. Collector supports attachments such as photos, as well as recording attributes in related tables, as in the local government information model or the land administration domain model. If I'm interested in collecting new data, such as property characteristics only or points, I can do so with Survey123. Survey123 comes in two flavors depending on the complexity of the data that you are interested in collecting. One is an easy to use online user interface available through ArcGIS Online. 
And the other is a downloadable application called Survey123 Connect. Connect allows for a more complex domain. And if this is the type of style of question that you would like, then you can go with the more robust version. Survey123 requires a username and login to set up, but surveys can be made accessible to the public. Let's take a look at the big picture on how the ArcGIS platform can be configured to support field operations. In the configuration above, services are feeding information to a field manager who is using workforce for ArcGIS to communicate with field staff who are using Collector to collect property boundaries with a GNSS receiver, as well as field staff who are using Survey123 to collect tenure information. All of the information collected in the field is either automatically written back to the service if field staff have connectivity, or if they are disconnected, then that information will sync and update the service when they regain connectivity back in the office. Even if there is still information being gathered in the field, this service can be shared to a web map, which can feed a number of web applications, as we saw earlier. In this case, the web map is feeding an operations dashboard that gives a heads up view of the crew's progress in the field. Let's take a look closer online. So in this instance, we'll be looking at the same data set and web map that I showed earlier with the hub demonstration. I just want to revisit this idea that we have a number of different layers in a web map and that this web map has been configured to be editable. If I go to settings, I can easily make this useful for collector in ArcGIS. This map is driving a workforce application. As I stated earlier, workforce is a useful tool for managing your field operations. I can do many different things as a dispatcher, but namely, I'm here to create assignments for property boundary and tenure collection. To create an assignment, all I have to do is pick a type or create a new one. When I configure workforce, I can choose any assignment type that makes sense for myself and my field crew. In this case, I'll assign a new property boundary collection. Then I assign a location. I can search for a specific address or I can just click on the map to create an assignment. I then want to assign that assignment to a field worker that's out there. You can see one person is out working currently and they show up green on the map. Others are not working. We'll go ahead and assign this to Catherine and give this priority a high priority and say that the due date is tomorrow. I can also type in a sh short description to communicate more effectively with my field staff or add attachments. After the assignment is created, it's automatically sent to field staff on their mobile devices. Here you can see my mobile, mobile device. I'll go ahead and open up Workforce. In Workforce, I have, a, you can see that assignment just came in. A notification can be also configured to pop up on one's phone to alert them to the assignment. From here, I'll go ahead and select that new assignment. I want to also make sure that my dispatcher knows I've started working on it, so I will select start. When I do this, the symbology changes here in the application and also back in the office because we're looking at the same map. Now I want to collect a property, so I'll select collect that assignment. I scroll down and say, yes, I want to collect here. 
I want to collect a spatial unit, so I'm going to go ahead and add a point. I can do this for the entire property. Of course, if I was in the field, I would be collecting these points with a high accuracy receiver. All right, I can go ahead and take a photo or put any attachments that I want in here. For category, I'll go ahead and label this as agricultural. And then I'll submit the feature. Now in the context of the land administration domain model, which is what I'm editing here, I have the option to go in and also update any of the related tables. I can add that table and fill out any of the attributes within it, and this will automatically update the information. In this case, domains have also been configured, so I have a drop-down list to choose from. Attachments and photos are also available with related tables. Now that I'm done collecting, I'm going to go back to workforce and say that I've finished my assignment. You'll see that the assignment disappears from the to-do list, but if I want to revisit it, I can always go back to completed and reopen that assignment. Now back in the office, you can see that this assignment has been updated. The feature should, there we go, come through. All of this information from here could then go on to be stored on, in a dashboard environment or as just a simple web application, providing a heads up view of the parcels collected. Great presentation, Catherine. Hopefully, you can see how ArcGIS simplifies data collection, optimizes time in the field, and provides a platform for managing all your field resources. From our webinar today, you've seen that ArcGIS should be your platform for land administration. We use the land administration domain model in a, in a simple configuration. LADM can be extended. We can give you our configuration if you'd like. You can choose your own configuration. I know some countries have their, their own implementations. And these land administration functions are a little bit different everywhere. So the solutions that need, they need to be configurable and act independently. But we want them to all be part of the same platform in the same system, leveraging open standards. That's ArcGIS. I'd like to highlight a few events where you can catch up with us if you're if if, if you're near where we'll be. Uh, we'll be at our partner conference in March in Palm Springs, California, as well as the Developer Summit a few days after. We'll be at the World Bank Land and Poverty Conference in Washington, D.C., March 25th through 29th. Uh, it's going to be a special conference this year. Uh, our president and founder, Jack Dangerman, will be keynoting. We'll be at the FIG conference in Hanoi, uh, with our full uh, suite of technical people for presentations, and if you have specific questions, we can dig deep into into your into your challenges. And I would like to invite all of you to our international user conference in San Diego in July. And we will also be at the Southeast Asia Survey Conference in Darwin, Australia, uh, in August. Before we take questions, I'd like to give you just a few links for some resources. If you have some questions and, and want to know how to get started, that, that's the first link. The, uh, we have a special program for under-resourced countries uh, called the Land Administration Modernization Program, where we have, uh, for, for a small administrative fee, the entire Esri stack of software uh, to help you get going in a land administration program. It's focused on cadastral agencies and valuation agencies. So if you, if you feel you're under-resourced and you fall in those categories, please go to that link, go.edsry.com, uh, LAMP1. And then our solutions page that, that 
details out how many of these applications and capabilities uh, come together. So I'm going to leave that on the screen while, while we take some questions. Let's see. Any thoughts on utilizing blockchain technologies with GIS in general? Uh, yes, a lot of thoughts and a lot of research. If you have a blockchain registry currently, we can we can obviously integrate with that. Uh, we are doing some work that we're not prepared to talk about yet on the geo blockchain, which is how we deal with um, securing location. So keep um, keep po you know keep uh, pay attention here, and and you'll see some things coming out from us in the uh, in the near future. But we're fully blockchain enabled. Is Workforce available as an app for a mobile device in the field? Workforce is a combination of apps, uh, some field apps, some office management apps, scheduling, and dashboards. So the, the answer is yes, but it's more than just an app in the field. It's, it's a combination, uh, a complete solution for managing the field force. Okay, hi Catherine Brent, an informative introductory webinar regarding recorded geodetic data. Is all metadata from the GNS receiver and other sensors besides coordinates databased in ArcGIS for traceability of data quality? That's a great question. The ArcGIS connects to GNS, the ArcGIS collector app connects to GNS uh, via Bluetooth with the NEMA string. So how you configure your NEMA string, what information comes in on the NEMA string can be recorded as uh, attributes to that feature. So if you can get it um, onto the NEMA string, we can get it into that feature. So hopefully that answers that question. All right, what is the difference between cadastral or cadaster and a land registry office? Land registry is generally considered the documents that get recorded that from a property transaction, whether it's a deed or a mortgage, uh, an easement, some type of documents that are registered uh, to reflect recording land rights. The cadaster is the mapping of those rights. And in many countries and in many cadastral systems, the land registry is not connected to the cadaster. And this causes um, a lot of inefficiencies uh, in using the data and can cause a lot, of, a lot of complications down the road. With ArcGIS, we have the ability to connect those two systems. And if, and if you'd like more information on that, I'm, I'm happy to talk ad nauseum about how to do that and how that works. There's actually some research going on right now from the uh, property Records Industry Association on how to use the property identification number to to tie to other other systems, whether it's tax or assessment systems. So I, I'm happy to help out with that if you'd like. Um, how does LADM work in this case? Well, what we did was we took the the LADM model and we configured a set of of features, so we mod we took LADM and we we modeled that in ArcGIS, and then we published those features as feature services, those feature classes as feature services, so we can use LADM as a feature service. We can host LADM in the cloud, in ArcGIS Online, and we can connect to it with a variety of of mobile devices and and desktops and other apps. So the reason we're using LADM, uh, because it is a global standard and it allows us to exchange data, communicate, uh, and grow uh, these land administration systems. As adoption of LADM continues, we will continue to build more apps that use LADM. So the uh, uh, so everyone who's using LADM can take advantage of those new apps. Okay, another question here. With regard to valuations, option to select different building measurement area volumes using different measurement standards guideline, IPMS, RICS, Red Book. Uh, yes, you can choose whatever me measurement standards you would like. The, the, the nice thing about ArcGIS is this is fully configurable. And you can choose what measurement standards you want, and then you can choose how you want to model those values. And using... Uh, Using regression, we can we can understand which of the property characteristics contribute more to value. Uh, 
for those that are really interested in this, there's also an R integration if you're if you're an R user with ArcGIS, if you want to do your work in R, or you can do your work in ArcGIS Pro as well. Um, we'll have a lot more information on this coming out in the future. I know the International Association of Assessing Officers has done some nice work on this. Okay, what is the app to upload field survey work? Uh, another good question. There's actually two apps. One is Survey123, which is designed to collect form-based information, maybe owner's name, uh, documents, things like that, addresses. Um, and then there's Collector, which is designed to collect features in the field and connect to high-accuracy GPS. So when you're working disconnected, you collect that information into the device, and then when you are connected Wi-Fi or if you want to use cellular, that information is automatically synced via web services. So the uploading process is very, very different than traditional survey. You cache a set of data before you go into the field from those, from those services. You do your work, and then when you're connected again, that data is synced up. So it's it's very different than um, uploading files in a traditional survey sense. Will there be follow-up for more specific webinars in the future, which will cover some of the other tools of this platform, such as parcel mapping? I can see that uh, that question has been answered, but I'd like to just say yes, and we are very interested in what topics you would like us to cover. We can go uh, we can do deep dives on topics. We can stay a little high level like we were today and talk about more elements of the platform. So please communicate directly with any of us um, for more information on that. Are there webinar resources for open data? Yes, there are a lot. Um, let me take that question offline because I don't have those at my fingertip tips, but we will put some together some materials to get out to you. Uh, how is this system more accurate than AutoCAD? That's a great question. The, uh, these, are, these are computer mapping systems. One's a, uh, a computer-assisted drafting capability. Uh, they're as accurate as you want them to be. The accuracy of these systems has to do with the data that you put into them. One of the main differences between AutoCAD and ArcGIS is that ArcGIS works in a projected environment. So when we work in very large geographies, we have to take into account that the Earth is round, and AutoCAD works in general planar, planar coordinate systems and, and paper space. We do have a special relationship with Autodesk where we can ingest uh, BIM files directly into, into GIS. We can actually drag and drop DWGs from AutoCAD directly into ArcGIS. And we have a plugin that you might want to experiment with. It's free. Um, it's called ArcGIS for AutoCAD. And what it allows you to do is work in your AutoCAD environment and connect to ArcGIS services kind of like a little bit of ArcGIS online behind the scenes uh, when you're working in your desktop uh, in AutoCAD. The, uh, I've used that many times, and uh, I'm old enough that I actually used a, a product many, many years ago called ArcCAD, and this mimics what, what that used to do. So uh, if you want to stay in AutoCAD, uh, please try ArcGIS for AutoCAD and, and see how that connects to the, to the cloud mapping environment. We can connect workforce APK to ArcGIS? If so, how? Can we connect workforce? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's a typo, and that says, can we connect the workforce app uh, to ArcGIS? If so, how? It's all part of the same platform. So uh, just by using these apps, they, they're, they're connected. So it's very, uh, they're connected through your identity and through Portal or ArcGIS Online. So when you fire up Collector, uh, or one of, or survey one, two, three, you connect to those maps and those services. Is workforce 100% web and web app based? Yes. All services based. Good question. Can this enhance the accuracy of land administration in wetland areas where there are sparse database? Yes. The, 
there are several tools um, in the parcel fabric if you're using a parcel fabric that allows you to incrementally improve the quality of your data. But in general, um, what if you can collect with GNSS uh, to a higher accuracy, um, we can ingest that data. There are tools out there that allow uh, globally uh, through subscriptions the highly accurate data. Uh, for example, Trimble Catalyst can deliver two centimeter accuracy globally, and that connects directly with with uh, with the collector app. So that's a that, hopefully that answers that question. How is the physical boundary and the legal boundary differentiated or tagged? That depends on the legal system that you're in. If you're, uh, oftentimes the the cadastral agency will will validate that boundary, so we can handle that tagging through just just an attribute of the feature. Um, but keep in mind that. ArcGIS is the technology system implemented in different ways based on the different legal systems that, that you're working in. I'm new in the ArcGIS environment and I want to use my ArcGIS for land administration in my field or country. Hold on, just like in our country do we need to buy it well it depends on your country the i can see that uh catherine's answered this question here so that if you look in your chat window there it gives you some contact information that will help out what if my land registration system in my respective country is not iso compliant that's not a problem uh, we adhere to iso standards and to uh, OGC standards for interoperability, uh, for the ability for developers to extend the platform, and for a, a wide variety of reasons. Um, but you don't have to use um, the ISO standards for, uh, for example, for the land administration domain model, should you choose not to use it. You can build those. Um, feature classes, those configurations uh, very easily yourself with, with, with different data models. Can we contact you? So if everybody, there's a lot of contact information Catherine's pasting in, that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna repeat this question. Um, I know Catherine answered it, but this is a good question. Do I need ArcGIS Enterprise to run the apps? Everything that you saw today was with, an, with ArcGIS Online. Many of these apps work disconnected as well. So that's a, uh, uh, I think that's a really important thing to note. It's very, very easy for you to get started. How do you convert ArcGIS AutoCAD drawings into ArcGIS? You can drag and drop. There's a lot of ways to do it. Um, we use a conversion engine uh, inside ArcGIS for uh, for doing those conversions. If, if you want to get real technical, they're based on the TIAGA libraries um, that are open source and available, and you can use those a wide variety of ways. Uh, you can use FME if you'd like, but but really it's a, uh, it's a drag and drop. Registering property lights along the coast across land and sea interface. What about additional dimensions? I don't understand that question. So if you could clarify that question, um, we do have the capabilities for different types of polylines and things like that. Okay, here's one. Depending on your jurisdiction, what is the legality of the data that we collect with this software? Typically in Canada, at least a land surveyor is needed for the creation of a new parcel fabric. Is this a tool that you see surveyors using? Absolutely. I think I think the parcel fabric is a an opportunity for surveyors that uh, that they probably should be a bit more active using. It depends on 
which country and which type of data. Sometimes, you know, there are areas, believe it or not, where they are looking at crowdsourcing property information. So the, there's, there's a lot of different ways to, um, to take a look at that. Uh, in some of the more mature land administration systems like Canada, particularly where uh, they have moved from a deed system to a torrent system, those are pretty rigorous field data collection requirements. Um, so I think the, um, uh, I think to answer your question directly, yeah, I see, I see land surveyors using these tools a lot. And I, I think land surveyors probably should be a bit more, uh, uh, a bit more involved in this environment. The, um, I can see that we're almost out of time and there is a long list of questions here. Uh, I'm going to, paste my contact information in the chat window. And Catherine, I, if you can do the same, that would be great. And we can, um, let's see, I think I did that in the wrong spot. And I would like to thank Catherine for her time. And I would like to thank all of you for your time for attending today's webinar. And please send along ideas for, uh, for things you'd like to see in our next webinar uh, in, the, in the Land Administration webinar series. Thanks.